Hi, Phil Chandler here. I'm uh, just doing a bit of hive maintenance, so I thought I'd say a few words about this type of hive in particular. This is a polynuke. Um, this one is supplied by Paynes, um, a well-known company in, in, uh, in Britain, uh, somewhere in Kent, I believe, somewhere over that way. Um, and yeah, they're very good, very useful uh, boxes. This one has uh, one brood box and one, two supers and a feeder on it at the moment. And if I just lift the lid, you can see there's, um, here's the bees and they're all busy uh, down inside the hive. And some of them are just tidying up a bag of sugar that I left them a couple of weeks ago. Now, um, there's actually a piece missing from this. There should be a, an acetate sheet on the top there. I don't know what's happened to that. What I want to talk to you about today is, is maintaining these uh, polynukes because if they're looked after, they will last a long time. I'm told maybe up to 20 years. Um, the, the, the vulnerability of them, well, there are two principal vulnerabilities, I suppose. One is the fact that they are made from a high density poly, poly what's it called? <laughs> poly something, um, plastic. Uh, polystyrene plastic. Um, it's not the soft stuff you n would normally find in packaging. Uh, it's much harder than that and it feels, it, it sounds more like wood when you tap it. It's hard. Um, the vulnerability is of course that it's somewhat brittle and, and actually there's a, a little nick in the back here which I must have knocked it against something or possibly um, using a hive tool to lever the the feeder off at some point I may have um, just damaged that so it, they are vulnerable to damage they're also vulnerable to ultraviolet light and you can see here on the top where I, I've, I've been painting or rather where I haven't been painting yet right here you can see that the well you can't see it I can feel that the polystyrene is quite rough and you can see that it is lighter um, uh, because the paint has, um, in fact, I mean, you can see this was green all over, but because this surface, the top surface, gets direct ultraviolet, it tends to, um, the paint disintegrates somewhat rather quickly, and the paint I used on here wasn't very good anyway, to be honest. This is a better paint. This is um, a Cuprinol fence paint that I'm using right now. There's a better one still, uh, I think, which is the Ron Seal um, garden paint, uh, which is a bit thicker than this, and although they both go on really, really well, and they're both water-based, of course, um, the, uh, the Ron Seal garden paint, I think, lasts longer. And I think they guarantee it for five years if you put three coats on, something like that. Anyway, so uh, it's important to keep a coat of paint on these hives. And I, I noticed this uh, the other day when I was up here. Uh, this one really needs another coat or two, so I'm doing that right now. Um, you've got to keep the ultraviolet light off, off, these, uh, off this polystyrene if you want it to last. The, the brittleness is just a matter of, well, being careful, I guess, and not being clumsy and not sticking your hive tool uh, in, into the polystyrene, but just being careful how you, how you pop the boxes apart. Um, otherwise, they are very useful things. They, um, they are uh, light, uh, they're strong, uh, they're, they're easy to use. Um, this colony, there's a colony in this one here. Uh, for example, that was very uh, strong and, and, and bustling, and I can show you inside here as well. If I just carefully, I've just painted this lid, so I've got to be a bit careful what I do with it. Um, if I peel the top off, here's the acetate sheet on this one. You can see there's, there's loads of bees in there. They're all bustling around doing their thing. Um, Th that's, uh, this acetate sheet, by the way, is, is a very nice feature because it means you can actually see what's going on in this hive uh, without disturbing the bees at all. I mean, obviously you can, you know, I can peel that back with my fingers um, and, and get a closer look if I want to. But looking through the acetate like this is really useful because I can see the state of the colony without having to disturb the bees or expose myself to the bees even. Um, Oh, another thing perhaps I should mention, um, the thickness, I would say, the thickness of the roof on these hives, these boxes, isn't really up to muster. I, could, I think it could do with being somewhat thicker. So what I do is I put a piece of this uh, reflectix, re reflectix material, which is the, you know, it's got like um, two layers of bubbles and some mylar. Um, it's a good, it's a reflective uh, ins insulator. Sorry, I'm just being clumsy here. So the wind's blowing the roof off and I've only got one hand free. 
let's just deal with that roof. Um, the, yeah, the extra insulation I think is a good idea. And the, another way of, of dealing with it, although I haven't done it on any of the hives here, another way of improving the insulation is to actually put a sheet of insulation, something like um, Celotex, uh, the, the, uh, the, the urethane frame insulation with the foil both sides. A piece of that on top is, is great. That helps a lot. Um, and to make that easy, um, you can either cut it kind of to fit in with these little um, protrusions on here. These are so the boxes stack easily, but they're not really that necessary. Um, so uh, you can either cut those off flat, flush with the, with the roof, or you can make cut your Celotex maybe to even to fit inside that rectangle if you were, f if you were fussy. Uh, but to be honest, I don't think it matters too much. So I'm gonna carry on painting now, and uh, I'm gonna give uh, everything I can see here a, a coat of the green paint. Um, and I shall do another video shortly because I want to talk about some other things as well. Um, but I just want to tackle on the end of this, uh, this video. I just want to say, um, I don't, I, I personally uh, don't want your money. Okay. I don't want your money. I don't, I have enough to, to get by on. I'm okay. So, but, but, and, um, friends of the bees, which is, um, which is, which set up as a charity, uh, what 11 years ago now it's now we're, we're now running it as a community interest company uh, because what we want to do is to encourage people to use our people in Britain that is of course to use our native bee the black bee Apis mellifera mellifera and so that's why I am breeding black bees I want to encourage people to use them so I want to be able to produce good quality queens productive queens that are gentle and easy to ha manage and that people really enjoy having in their Hives. So, um, if you want to help us with that work, it would be, I'd be greatly, uh, I would greatly appreciate it if you were willing to make a small donation or even a large donation to Friends of the Bees on their website, which is friendsofthebees.org. Org, and um, you can make. A, I mean, actually, what I would really like, what I would really, really like, is for uh, one or two thousand people to just give us you know, a couple of quid a month, one or two pounds a month, one or two dollars a month even, uh, because that, that would then create a, a stable income that we can build on and that we can actually keep the thing running without having to worry about where the next you know, 500 pound, 1,000 pound grant is coming from. So um, grant applications take up a huge amount of time, as anybody who's done them will know. And I would, I would in a way, rather have community support. I would rather have support from the people that we're trying to uh we're trying to I'm trying to help we're, we're, we're the, the people that support what we do you know the people who really care about the, the native bee and bees in general um so if you feel that way uh, i would very much appreciate as i say a, a small donation to friends of the bees not to me and uh if you want to pop down to their website friendsofthebees.org that would be great thank you very much for that and i'll see you in the next video